Welcome to The Power Curve. I'm Holly Scott. In our podcast, I like to chat with industry executives who have accomplished much in their career with the intention of sharing with you, our audience, as you navigate your own career trajectory. Today, I'm fortunate to have the quite accomplished Tal Wendro, as well as friend of firm here in studio, not even on Zoom. Much better. Live and in person, much, much, much better. better. Thanks for coming today, oh, Tal. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Excellent to have you here. So we're chatting about career, we're chatting about accomplishments and, and all that uh, you've experienced with the idea of, of sharing your wealth of knowledge with others. I am a firm believer, and it's been my experience, that the foundation is set early. So could you tell us a little bit about your upbringing and what career meant in your household? You started right off the bat with the <laughs> toughest question. <laughs> so I'm going way yeah, back. No, that, Get the cobwebs fine. out. Um, <laughs> So as you can tell from my lack of Bostonian accent, I actually grew up in Israel and uh, moved in 06 to the Boston area. And you know, when I grew up, it was always how do you make an impact? And you know, my, my father was a jet pilot, uh, actually you know, passed away when I was five and a half. My two grandparents were both engineers, which was very early. I, unfortunately, I studied mechanical engineer biomedical, but Luckily, I did not practice that almost, but it's all about how do you make an impact and not just another piece of the puzzle. Mm. And, and that's kind of like the way it was, and healthcare was always around that in our, our household. So it's when I, I went to the Technion, studied mechanical engineering, biomedical, as I mentioned, and to be honest, got recruited by all these big companies, and I didn't, did not want to join them. No. It's... You know, you need something to drive for. You need something that really make an impact, and it's all about risk, right? And and how do you balance that? But it's not a specific goal that I had, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of you roll into that, and you know how life is taking a curve. Mm -hmm. No pun intended, but <laughs> mm -hmm. to lead you to where you are, right? Sure. Sure, so engineering, so are you uh, an only child or do you have brothers and sisters? I have one sister from the same father and other step-siblings. Okay, okay. Yeah. Was it, did your mom have a career? My, my mom was an engineer as well and then become a nurse. Oh, wow, an engineer yeah. went into nursing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh, when did yeah. that transition happen? A long time ago. When, when you were young? <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. after okay. my father passed away. So, okay, yeah, yeah, so. okay, and okay. So, that's kind of the house it's like and, and my grandfather was a, a water irrigation <coughs> engineer sorry okay and really look into how do you innovate and how do you deliver water to um, third world countries mm -hmm. that you don't have access to capital you don't have access to investment and how do you distribute the water and as you know Israel is part desert part you know palm springs and all that sure but how do you invent that? So it's always about inventions, always about, you know, and that's also the ecosystem in Israel. It's, you know, it's you study not to maintain the status quo, right? You're always challenging that in a good and a bad way. As sure. you know, working with Israel, it can be challenging often, uh -huh. but because it, you're trained, and we discussed earlier before we went live about education, mm -hmm. you were trained not just to be in the box mm -hmm. and always to challenge that. And I think that's part of that. That's, that to me is so powerful because as we were sharing about our own children's experience, sometimes I get the feeling they're playing towards how to be in the box, how yeah. to game for this test, how to do that. Yeah. So I'm, how, how, did, how has Israel successfully, and this is a general question, we'll get specific, <laughs> but how have they successfully um, with all respect, set up this infrastructure that not only allows for creative thought and, and mm -hmm. that, that encourages it, and then as a second level to that question, how does one who may look around and say, holy cow, how am I gonna keep up with all these incredible, yeah. bright people, how do they thrive in that competitive environment? I'll start with the second, meaning I'm a very competitive person. Mm -hmm. And competition is good. Sure. Uh, if, if, if there's no competition, you're either too smart or too stupid. Mm -hmm. And I'm neither in my humble opinion. But I don't have the right answer to Israel. And we speak for a lot of people. Everyone has their own take. To me, it's all tied to where you are, mm -hmm. right? So unfortunately, you know, without getting into politics, the geopolitical situation in Israel and the lack of natural resource mm -hmm. get to a point that 
the brain, the power to invent is the only resource you got. Mm. Uh, survival. Survival, right? And mm -hmm. look on, you know, all the Israeli wars and the armies, and unfortunately you have to reinvent how you think about things mm -hmm. and how, and not just do the same thing that all the others are doing. Mm -hmm. And that necessity is driving people to think outside of the box mm -hmm. and from a survival perspective to, because Israel been, you know, um, under threat, still under threat mm -hmm. and all the time. So that necessity to invent, mm -hmm. I think that's fundamental. Mm -hmm. And I think the second thing about that is the ecosystem enable you to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. As long as you don't repeat them. Mm -hmm. But as an investor, I'd rather invest with someone that failed in his first company. Mm -hmm. You have those cars, mm -hmm. right? Because if someone was lucky, even initially, then he doesn't know what's failure. And failure is a good thing. That's how you learn. That's how you adjust. That's how you, you know, mm -hmm. change your trajectory. So I think those together, and then how do you educate? Mm -hmm. And that competition, if you go back probably 20, 25 years ago, that was the first exit of an Israeli company. Mm -hmm. And there's a big story about that. Mm -hmm. Statistically, you know that better than I, only 1% are making to commercial, mm -hmm, right? And then mm -hmm. how many of those are actually liquid and, and return their investment? Mm -hmm. But that dream, to follow that dream, I think that's the driver, because mm -hmm. people like to dream. And, and mm -hmm. it's in the DNA, but it also works against Israel. You don't see a lot of manufacturing in Israel, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. meaning you don't have that capacity to sit in your, do the same repeated job all day long mm -hmm. and just make a career of that. Sure. So I think it goes for Israel and against Israel. Mm -hmm. That's the reason that people call it startup nation. Mm -hmm. But that person to me was a drive is how do you always make an impact? Yeah, it's, 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 it, it, it's a testimony to what I see mm -hmm. when I chat with people about their career all the time is, look, if, if it doesn't kill you, it's going to make you stronger. You may not feel it at the time, right? But the, in, the, in terms of, of what you're doing culturally as no. well as individually, you're in a situation where you have to strive for more and you're encouraged and the protection against what failure means is so important because so many people hang themselves on what didn't what the outcome yeah. with an outcome yeah. and and really it's simply that it's an outcome right you have to adjust and move meaning going back to this quote there's mm -hmm. a lot of discussion you probably follow about Yanis uh, NBA finals quote mm -hmm. about failure and what you expect me to the journey is important, right? Mm -hmm. You have to make, to be successful, you mm -hmm. have to put everything you got into that. Mm -hmm. But in the end of the day, outcome, to your point, means differently to different people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I think the best days, honestly, and I know the startup nation history yeah. and, and where we've been, I think the best days of, of globalization, including Israeli innovation, are yet to come. I think we have so much opportunity there, especially as we see organizations that are, um, more global in terms of partnerships and financing mm -hmm. setups like similar to our organization that you're with yeah. today and yeah. you know we're seeing more reach and more partnerships that just weren't there before and not only is it creating more interest in making it work it's becoming more harmonious in terms of cultural differences and how do we best work together and creating best practices. Right. So it's obviously still a work in progress and it will be. It will be in the geopolitical situation, whether within or outside of Israel is always challenging, Absolutely. right? And, and Israel makes its own mistakes, something mm -hmm. they're doing right or wrong, sure. right? Um, but I think the globalization, it used to be a big world before COVID. Now it's a little bit challenging with mm -hmm. especially what happened with Russia and China and, and the US and how do you bundle that together but to me the point is access mm -hmm. is you have better access mm -hmm. because of covid mm -hmm. and it's acceptable to do zoom calls right right you're surprised that i came here right 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 <laughs> so um and and the second thing is the ability of people to really go and come back yes so you see people going to the u.s and come back to israel and bring that marketing experience uh, mm -hmm. and not just engineering and not just developing the technology, but really developing a product, mm -hmm. especially in healthcare, right? Because Israel as a market is very small. So most of the products are not for the Israeli market. That's right, that's right. And I'm seeing an emergence of a, of a, a tier leader in a similar fashion to where you are, more mm -hmm. of a, someone who can become mm -hmm. more mm -hmm. of a conduit of here's, here's what we're doing right over here in Israel, and here's yeah. the innovative side, and here's best practices, and here's what we like about the American dream, the American pr scale up and, and, the, and the space and the impact yeah. on production and manufacturing. So yeah, some 
it's, it's, it's some good good activity. Not that the U.S. health care is perfect. Oh gosh! <laughs> oh my goodness, no, 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 and that's that's. There's, there's a lot to be said there. That's another podcast, though, right? <laughs> so if we think back, <laughs> let's go back to your engineering route. So mechanical <clears throat> with biomedical, yeah. it, was it a dual degree? No, anything? there was back then not an undergrad degree for biomedical. Okay. So I just took, I, I chose mechanical engineer by virtue of elimination, mm -hmm. to be honest. Mm -hmm. I did not know what I wanted to study. To your point, you were pushed to go to college. Sure. And I across all the lawyers uh, and all those, and software was just starting. I didn't want to just write code, so mm -hmm. it happens to be. And, and then I start taking some biomedical course, which was back then in Israel was only grad degree, not an undergrad. And actually, I think that was similar here. When we first, 25, 30 yeah. years ago, mechanical engineers were the med tech engineers. Right. Um, biomedical has been an exactly. evolving education. So I was fascinated as I'm looking back at your background. You mentioned that you, you were courted by some large strategics, but that wasn't for you. So what were you thinking as you're graduating and, and, and trying to figure out what's next? You've had a lot of emphasis on impact throughout your life. Yeah. You're, you're, you're competitive. You're, you're, you're someone who is educated now, and you want to go out and make that impact, make your family proud. So luckily, I was naive, uh -huh. and I did not have kids. <laughs> Very simple. Ignorance so, is bliss, right? <laughs> the things I did back then, I'll never do again. <laughs> but uh, I was married, but no kids. Mm -hmm. and my wife was not in the field back then. We, we converted her. <laughs> Thanks for the help. Yes. <laughs> but the dark uh, side. <laughs> um, I just wanted to do something in healthcare, and I mm -hmm. actually reached out and through connection. I came to a meeting with Professor Rafi Biar who was back then the dean of the faculty of medicine in the Technion. Okay, at your college, at the university yeah, you were yeah, attending. Yeah, 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 but it just thing. happened to mm -hmm. that, you know, one of his mentors was my grandfather's best friend, and they organized okay. a meeting. Okay, And this is, was 2001, so post-2000 bubble, no one wants to start uh, startups, and I just met him, uh -huh. and I remember he's showing me a piece of patent application. Okay. Do you want to start a company? And I was like, what the heck are you talking about? Okay. I did not even graduate officially. <laughs> sure, yeah. And after two weeks, I came back being naive. Uh -huh. There's nothing to lose. If it's a failure, it's not my failure. Yeah. If it's a success, I can credit credit. And we started this, uh, in the Technion Incubator back then. Okay. Was this the in inception of Corundus? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, as simple as that. <laughs> so at the time, what was it? What, what, what Was it an... Uh, a sketch on a napkin it kind of a, a thing, IP protection? He wrote the patent okay. and filed it, uh -huh. and that's what it was, a uh, patent application. That has some ideas around it, but okay. more concept, very general concept without reduction to, too much reduction to practice. Okay, so at the time it was a conceptual patent. Yeah. And it was your role to, to design it? Develop to, it? To do whatever it takes to bring it to market. And oh being naive, I thought it would take me two years and we're done. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we hear that a lot. <laughs> it's much more complicated than that. Yeah. But we started the uh, Techno Incubator. We got some outside consulting. I was a one-man show for three years. Okay, okay. And we did first in human, which is unheard, I think after 18 months. Wow. With a product that I'm not sure I will bring to an animal lab today, right? Okay, okay. Uh, but it works. And it cowboy allows stuff back then. Mm -hmm. it, it allows to raise money. And that's before mm -hmm. robotics was a big thing. I mean, mm -hmm. intuitive motion, computer, intuitive surgical was mm -hmm. intuitive motion, computer motion, whatever the names were, mm -hmm. just merged. Valuation was at the floor. Mm -hmm. Today you say robotics, it's high valuation. So, Yeah, so I'm, of course, familiar with the end game product of Kerndis. What was the original, what was that concept? So for full disclosure, the concept came from his wife. Okay. So he came back. I'm not surprised, but okay. <laughs> Me neither. <She's, laughs> Dali is awesome, but she saw him come back every uh -huh. day. And when you're in the cathode, it's a very hazardous place, radiation, back pain, and all that. And sure. said, yeah. just build a robot to do it for you. So he wrote a patent application with her, right? I actually had to add his name on the inventor because he's the physician. And okay. she cannot invent that by, based on the patent law thoughts, right? Uh -huh. 
and that's how it started. But then you have a robotic system. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's occupation hazards, but it's the ability to do it remote. It's the ability to add precision, mm -hmm. uh, automation, and th but that's how we started. That's how you started. Did you have any, in thinking back to your 20-year-old yeah, self yeah. at the time, could you have ever imagined 20 years later that the product and service yeah. would look like it did? Yes, after five years, right? Not after really? 20 years. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah, after five years, you were starting to think, okay, I've no, got That's a not bad. We'll take 510K, we'll do it, and it's done. Yeah. Meaning, uh, and I still see a lot of slide deck from you know, uh, young CEOs that mm -hmm. you know, they look at the timeline, 90 days for FDA approval. That's not the way it works. No, but yeah. FDA says 90 days. But sure. yes, we, you know, you, as a startup founder, you have mm -hmm. to dream. Mm -hmm. And you have to dream all the time and you have to really believe that you're going to get to the end goal. Mm -hmm. Because if you are not convinced, you cannot convince your employees, your board, and your investors. Mm -hmm. So I was a believer, still a believer. Unfortunately, you probably heard what Siemens did with Corinda's announcement, I think it was a month or two months ago. Mm -hmm. But I really thought it can change it. And, and we had points that we did not have money in the bank, and, uh, yeah. and we moved from Israel to the US with mm -hmm. not a lot of money. How, so really how did that happen? So, so you're now, okay, we're in the stage where you've committed to this organization. You're going to now lead this startup yeah. with your professor. There's no organization back then, but yes. It, well, <laughs> you, you too. <laughs> and you said, okay, I'm in. And you fortunately had a wife at the time that was supportive of this yeah, yeah. harebrained idea, right? And, and, and so how did you get to your next, how did you get to that first fundraise to even start building out this potential prototype? So we applied to the Technion Incubator to begin with. Okay. Which is an accelerator in Israel funded by government money that you need to bring some private funding to that. But the budget initially was nothing. Right? Okay. And to be honest, the, uh, the CEO of the incubator back then did not want me. Really? Because I was too young. Too I did young. not know anything. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't blame him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll say the same thing. Mm -hmm. But luckily, I came with the inventor, with Rafi, so we started. So the incubator provided you the infrastructure okay. and accounting, legal, and all that. Okay. And then help you, guide you through that. So okay. uh, that's part of the initiative of the Israeli government to really foster innovation and okay. give them the infrastructure. Interesting that that's a, a government um, subsidized yeah. Yeah. effort. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's still there. Mm -hmm. It's still there. And we got an outside consulting R and D and just helped us build. And mm -hmm. I did. I think I did the software eventually. Okay. I'm still shocked that it worked, <laughs> but it worked. Mm -hmm. And and as I mentioned, it got us to really initial milestone to okay. prove the mechanism of action, to prove the concept, allow us to raise our A round, which moved us to Boston. Okay. So the A round is when. What was what was the what was the reason to move to Boston? Very simple. The mm -hmm. investor was living in Boston. He lived okay. back and said, come. The investor drove That's part of the that. condition. Okay. I want you near me. Okay. Which was, okay. in hindsight, the right decision for Corindus. Sure. It will go under in Israel, yeah. 100%. Yeah. At the, yeah, especially at the time. Yeah. So that was that was a move. And then I had to convince my wife, mm -hmm. which was a three-year-old back then. Oh, my goodness. To change career for her and all that. So. How did that go? I'm still here, so. Still, there, still together, she's supportive. Yeah, still together. Uh, it's all about sacrificing and, mm -hmm. and making compromise. Mm -hmm. So she was an internet company, internet provider. Mm -hmm. And as part of uh, moving to the Boston, she moved to healthcare. So mm -hmm. she started work for, working for that investment firm mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and learn. And, mm -hmm. and now she's VP marketing in a healthcare company. Mm -hmm. um, but it was tough. Mm -hmm. so if you ask her, probably more than I appreciate it. Because she had to, we all have to move with three year old. I had work, I had mm -hmm. my mindset for that, but you find work and amazing work very mm -hmm. fast. She didn't come to you and say, Can't you take a job with one of those big companies and be Never. a satellite employee Never. here? She knows all of us. So, yeah. Even today, we'll speak about Genesis, is, is a bigger company that I'm mm -hmm. used to. <laughs> 2,000 people is mm -hmm. way too. Bigger than what you're, yeah, yeah, well, what you're used to. <laughs> I know, I know. So, okay, so now you're in Boston. What was next? Did you get a, did you have an office? Did you start hiring people? Yes, yes, and yes. So, mm -hmm. so we went to uh, Hillel Backer, who was the investor. So he had an office. So we took a suite in his office, and mm -hmm. we started building and did some key hire, VPR and d some marketing, mm -hmm. and start aligning towards clinical in the US. Mm -hmm. Okay. And building that. Still very 
low-key, we have probably seven or eight employees who we did the B round. Seven or eight by B round, you said? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so still fairly small. Very small. Mm -hmm. Doing improvement, we kept R&D in Israel initially, then we moved it to the U.S. Okay. So all the while, you're learning as a young leader. I was how. an expert back then, by then. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. So you're now learning on the job how to build a company yeah. as well as hire and build and mentor people yeah. within that company. Yeah. So what did you learn along the way? It's funny. I think I learned the most after the B-Round when we got a new CEO, David Handler. Uh -huh. And to be honest, I was against bringing a CEO initially because mm -hmm. I was an expert in my sure. Sure. mind. But that's where I learned the most because mm -hmm. I stayed. Usually founders do not stay. So mm -hmm. I stayed, adjusted, mm -hmm. um, but I learned to listen. I learned to observe other people, mm -hmm. still being on, you know, challenging the status quo because mm -hmm. that's the DNA. Mm -hmm. um, but to me, listening and understanding the real needs from whether it's a product, physician, mm -hmm. or individual, and how do you take that and you and you really try to understand what they really mean by mm -hmm. saying that. That's the thing that I think I learned the most. Mm -hmm. Because initially I was very impatient and very, I'm still sometimes part of the job. Sure, it's part <laughs> of the job. It's part of what yeah, keeps yeah. you yeah. driven and, and successful. It, I think that's incredibly valuable for, for some to hear because many, many founding CEOs have to cross the, cross the bridge, cross the decision mark, of bringing in for the health of their baby, for the yeah. health of their business, yeah. someone who has more experience, someone has more connections, someone has yeah. whatever that might be um, to an organization. And the decision when you are, you are who you are, and that's what's gotten you to this point to where you're at the tip of the spear, but to be able to be the tip of the spear and in the best interest of the organization, shift focus to, okay, I've got to play a different part mm -hmm. in this play. I've got to play a supporting character in a different way. It doesn't mean that I'm not incredibly valuable. And it, it, it probably felt different at the time, but at the, it wasn't the best interest. I remember who, yeah. David and David's background. He was a GE guy. Yeah. You know, yeah. we're talking yeah. total, total opposite <laughs> of you, right? And, and that, that harmony creates yeah. discussions about how we can go next level, how yeah. we can build and how we can grow. And it took time, right? It mm -hmm. took time for me to not only recognize, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, appreciate. Sure. And it took time for David, and he's a good friend still mm -hmm. till today, to understand the value. Coming from G, you want, you're tending to box people in swim lanes, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But if you do that to a founder, you're going to lose him. Sure. Are, so yeah. you have to let him go in a way mm -hmm. across mm -hmm. the organization and really provide value as a, whatever the comp like a sophisticated handyman I'll call it right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in a good way not in a bad way that's true because I still think when especially in a startup that passion of the founder is so crucial mm -hmm. not just for the R&D team mm -hmm. not just for the vision and the mission of the company but also for the customers oh and investors and investors because I remember mm -hmm. you know Till probably, you know, when Toll and I was the number two sales guy after him, I was the number one or two with him. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. people buy from people Absolutely. at the end of the day. Absolutely. So that personal drive and why did you do that? And you're mm -hmm. still here, meaning you're still believing in that. Mm -hmm. That means something. That's it. And and the reality is in, re in, in <laughs> seeing it from watching you grow over the years, you're a better leader, a better business person, a better investor, <clears throat> a better entrepreneur, all of those things, because you were able to play such a, a variety of parts in the growth of Corindus. I'll come every Friday if you'll keep saying that. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, it's true. And, and that, that growth <clears throat> is something that we can, you can build on. And, yep. and, and should you, I, I know you yep. have a great opportunity right now, but you're young, who knows? If you decide to, to build another business, if you decide to, to do whatever you do, you now have this wealth of experience that had you said, forget this, I'm out, I'm going to go start up another it's, company. It's the easiest one sometimes to founders. And, and I see also founders that are staying, and 
now we're looking into companies that's still fighting with that CEO and not mm -hmm. embracing that. And, and it's a hard, I don't, you know, it's your baby. Sure. You know the best how the product should look. Mm -hmm. Now you bring in a VPR and they'll tell you what the product is. But it's adjusting, compromising, and understanding the bigger goal. And mm -hmm. it came with a lot of, you know, ups and downs personally. Sure. Do sure. I stay? Do I go? What's mm -hmm. my role? What's mm -hmm. my legacy? Mm -hmm. um, do I still have the drive to wake up every morning and, and travel and go there? I think if you see the biggest goal, yes, but it's in the end of the day, it's all about people. Meaning, I left Corindos to be honest when I stopped having fun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, well, it's not about financial. Mm -hmm. I actually make, made more money in Corindos when after I left mm -hmm. because of the acquisition. But it mm -hmm. just when you stop having fun, then you know it's time to go. One hundred percent, you know, and 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 I encourage people to look at it on a bigger than a couple day perspective. <laughs> you know, we all have bad days. Oh, yeah. We all have days where we're like, what the heck are we doing? That's totally normal, but at the end of the day, if you don't feel, if you can't come back to that visceral feeling of making an impact yeah. in a positive way, that's what drives people. It's never tell you everyone. It's yeah. not about money. No, it's, it's not, not about titles. It's not about. It really does come back to where can I impact? And, uh, and where can you still learn? Which mm -hmm. I hard having a hard time telling my kids that you learn every day. Like you and I chatted mm -hmm. about the <laughs> alarm clock earlier. But also, how do you reinvent yourself? Mm -hmm. Meaning. Like you guys are doing here with this, right? It's not that your typical search firm mm -hmm. doing a podcast with a live studio that costs fortune. Mm -hmm. How do you keep reinventing yourself and, and taking yourself to the next level? And to me, that's the drive. Otherwise, just go retire or, or work in a company nine to five and just go home. That's which right. Which is not my drive. I mean, that's right. Well, I'm, a, I'm a believer that if you're not moving forward, you're moving backward. I'm yeah. not good at yeah. just status quo. It's, it's you have to be, yeah. you know, that momentum is, 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 is big. And career momentum is is a real thing. It's a real thing, and and we see individuals who sit in the pocket because they're being highly compensated for a long time, and they don't understand the opportunity cost of what they're missing out on without being challenged and without growing, because the market changes around you. Right. You can do the same job for three, five, ten years, as long as the market has kept current with that job. Right, but if the second the market's changing and you're not changing, you are you are creating. A Although challenge for I will argue, challenging the status quo, it's a bell curve, right? You want people that think like that mm -hmm. when you think about the entire jobs out there, mm -hmm. right? Even in a startup, right? You want to have a quality guy. I don't want him to challenge his job. That's true. That's you, true. You want to yes. have a VP R and D that yes. is the design engineer. You want him to challenge, but the, the engineer that designed the production just keep doing that. So you want a bell curve of people. Yes. Not everyone can do changing all the time because that would be really problematic for us. Yes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. However, even in a quality yeah. or regulatory yeah. example where they're they're so black and white, let's think of the FDA guidance that the regulatory person has to yeah. to work against. The people who are with, not keeping with, their playbook current yeah. and understanding yeah. the changing guidelines yeah. that happen all the oh, yeah, time. For sure. And it doesn't mean that they won't be able to find a job putting 510k clearances together and, and getting the paperwork, it's that they will lose marketability for the next big Correct. game changer. Correct. So it's 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 ensuring that your personal barometer Absolutely. fulfillment yeah. Yeah. is is there. I know many people who have held the same functional role for yeah. many, many yeah. years. And they love it. I know. And they love what they but do. I, 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 that's because they, they go in and they make an impact every day and the people around them, they, they, they surround themselves with, they feel, bring out the best in them. Mm -hmm. They're challenged, they're bringing right. it. Th there's nothing wrong with that. No. Nothing. It's all about risk. Everyone has its different risk tolerance and what's the reward on that risk and what's yeah. your, you know, one thing in a startup sometimes you don't think about contingency plan. Mm -hmm. You're driving, right? Mm -hmm. the, the clinical trial will be successful. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> no matter what, yes. and the product will work. And, and a part of the things I learned, and, and big companies are always thinking about the risk even too much, right? Mm -hmm. Even like FDA risk, you mentioned FDA. They will read the guidelines literally and not trying to think about, these are goalposts and mm -hmm. it will walk in between. Mm -hmm. But the guidelines, are even quality, quality is not your police of the company. That's it. It's want to make sure you're doing the right things and you exactly. have to use them as a partner, not as a, you know, a, Someone that's actually Please. trying to check you all the time. Exactly, exactly. The best, the best quality regulatory people are true partners and really supportive, yeah. and work work 
in partnership right. with a right. product development team, right. early stage yeah. teams. So yeah, no, that's yeah. good. So if you were to counsel your 20 year old self, uh, now knowing where yeah, you yeah. are 20 plus years later, um, would you give yourself any advice that you, you, you perhaps would have liked to incorporate earlier in your career? Probably there's a lot because there's too many scars on my back uh, <laughs> for, for mistakes we made, but I don't think there's an advice that you can apply and learn from that because you have to learn from your own mistakes. It's mm -hmm. a trial and error in a way. And unfortunately, especially in medtech and the transition into different industries within the, the healthcare, digitalization, robotics, AI, there is no one solution that fits all. Mm -hmm. And each company is different and each product is different. And what I think it's important, as I mentioned, is listening is extremely important. People underestimate, in my opinion, the, the value of a team, mm -hmm. and that ties to transparency. I was, I think, or I hope, well, you can ask people that work with me, very transparent all the time. Mm -hmm. The good, the bad, and the ugly, mm -hmm. which I think it's important, because that's how you create partners along the way that believe in your mission, and not just, you're sitting there, you're disconnected. Mm -hmm. So I think transparency is important, with the strategics also. Mm -hmm. I mean, some of my friends in the strategics, Oh, the Siemens folks, we knew for 15 years because we just met them every time and we share the progress and not being stealth mode. Um, but unfortunately, I don't have that answer. It's like, <laughs> here's the advice. But, mm -hmm. you know, mentors is important, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and finding, I think the biggest advice I can think about if I'm a CEO is find, bring a board member mm -hmm. that is an industry expert, that is independent, that does not think about financial returns. Hmm. because he will help you mm -hmm. think about how you build a company mm -hmm. and you can run ideas by him without thinking oh now I need to give you another million dollars or another mm -hmm. five million dollars mm -hmm. it's not his own he's not thinking like that he's mm -hmm. thinking about how do I make an upside and, and usually these guys oh, will not do it for the money mm -hmm. they'll do it because they really want to mentor people I meaning obviously equity is part of that but mm -hmm. you're not doing that for this yeah we get to a point in career wise most individuals, yeah. after a certain level of accomplishments, it's not about money anymore. It really is about giving back yeah. in some way. Yeah. So that's that's really sound advice. So getting the industry expert, perhaps one that complements your style or that's willing to challenge your ideas and, and balance you. Yeah. So it's not or even not complement your style. Even someone against that you can bounce ideas and mm -hmm. you know the biggest. And, and now I'm on the other side. I'm a board mm -hmm. member in several companies, and I'm telling the companies, call me anytime. Mm -hmm. I mean, you need to be able to have that board member to call at 3 a.m. Yes, yes. That's maybe too aggressive, but <laughs> late at night. <laughs> they need when it, you, though. They need it. Because mm -hmm. if everything goes well, you don't need the board. That's it. That's it. And that's that's absolutely not the case ever. No. Nothing always goes perfectly. There's always no. challenges. Yes. So having accessibility to a board, yeah. a board that is, that is um, able to help you and mentor and engage right. as needed, yeah. that's pretty powerful. It, it, even in the tough decision, right? Mm -hmm. Should I bring an outside CEO? Should mm -hmm. I bring, and, and you know that better than I, I think some people I see are trying to hire people that are not as good as they are mm -hmm. because they're afraid about job security, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? If I get this guy, mm -hmm. she's a rock star. Mm -hmm. Would she take my job? Mm -hmm. And I would say, yes, that's your job as a manager. That's it, 100%. You have to think about succession plan, but people don't think like that, especially in startups. Yeah, the, yeah the, the, the biggest challenge with working with with leadership and, 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 and making business decisions always comes back to e ego and insecurities, yeah, yeah. which I put in the same bucket. Yeah. They're, they're, they're psychological challenges that are almost impossible to fix quickly. So if we're dealing with that in a company, yeah. and especially if investors can see that, that can be a problem. That can be a yeah. serious, serious issue. And, and you know, I remember myself when we started having a commercial team, mm -hmm. I was like, why is this guy making more money than me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's hard, right? Sure, of course. And you see that in the engineering. It's the, it's the ego, yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's a healthy organization mm -hmm. when the sales guy actually make more than the CEO. Oh, yeah. That's the right Do you think everybody in the Rolling Stones got paid the same, or do you think Mick Jagger made a little more money? Let's be realistic. Yeah. You know, this is, this is the way teams are built. And if you truly are looking at the holistic company and where are we going as an organization, those are, we're all pieces yeah. in that puzzle, yeah. including the CEO. Yeah. I know many CEOs who make less money than their executive team. I mean, they may have more equity or everything else, but at the end of the day, it's, it's really got to be about what are we going to do yeah. to 
first of all, bringing the people that aren't money first, but in there with the same intention. We share the North Star and then folding out with the, 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 the partners that are going to harmonize yeah. together to, to, to really build that right. high functioning and, and, and use, you know, use your capital. Every time you speak, I remind me of another advice to myself is I was very cheap initially in terms of money allocation, mm -hmm. right? My wife still thinks I'm cheap sometimes, but that's a different <laughs> discussion. <laughs> but no, she doesn't, but <laughs> I hope. <laughs> but to me, you have to be efficient with the capital. Mm -hmm. And capital today is even more expensive than two years ago. Yeah. But you have to spend it because mm -hmm. if you don't spend it, you're, mm -hmm. doing, you're basically doing nothing, right? Yes. So what's yeah. that balance? I think it's mm -hmm. always a challenge, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, do you spend money to go to that trade show? Do you spend money to go to TMG and, and do a search, or you go on LinkedIn and search for three months? What does that mm -hmm. opportunity cost or three months exactly. cost you? I think that balance is really hard for first-time CEOs and founders. Mm -hmm. You either spend too much or too little. That's and, right. And, and, and that's I think I know in hindsight. Sometimes I said, oh. We should have spent more mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and to really accelerate some of the items that mm -hmm. are important for the company. Yeah, and it, 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 it feels so risky, but sometimes it's yeah. it's money well spent. Let's talk a little bit about Genesis. Let's talk about um, yeah. what brought you here. This is such an interesting organization that I really didn't know existed until some of my favorite people in the industry went there, including you. So um, talk. how did that happen? So you yeah. exited Corindus for... Um, the, the, the sale is what? 1.1 1. 1 1. what? 1. Billion? Yeah. With a B. Um, very successful story. After a long road, you certainly deserved, deserved that uh, win. So what was next for you? So I actually left a couple of months before the acquisition mm -hmm. uh, uh, and then went to be a CEO of a digital health company, mm -hmm. Israel US based, that unfortunately we spoke a lot about startups. Mm -hmm. Startups need two ingredients that you cannot control, mm -hmm. timing and luck. And Corindus, by the way, almost shut down four times. Yeah. Four times. We four did, times? We did Riff. We, four times. I mean, the B round, we had $20,000 in the bank when we closed our $8 million round. Exactly. And I, I was naive. That's my point. You didn't know any better. This, like I remember this, the VP of R&D came to me, Tom, and it's like, so between the two of us, how much money did we have in the bank? 300, 400, 20K. Are you kidding me? 20K. So that's the naive that you have to be sometimes in the startup. And everyone has the same stories, right? Sure. You sure. just don't hear them. So I went to do a digital health startup in the vocal biomarker. Again, really, how do you use your voice as an indication for your health? Mm -hmm. We are probably, we we're premature, the market. And then COVID arrived, which was a good thing because it uh, enhanced the value of digital health and, and uh, remote patient monitoring and all of that. Mm -hmm. The challenge we did not have. have have a product ready. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So unfortunately, that company went under. Mm -hmm. um, and when I look, what do I want to do? I was like, I want to build mm -hmm. several companies. And I was actually contemplating, do I do my own investment vehicle, let's call it? Mm -hmm. I don't want to use the word fund in intentionally. Or, and I looked around, uh, obviously, you know, spoke with you guys and others. And then I reached out to Warren Wang, who is the CEO of, Gen found the CEO of Genesis. Mm -hmm. And Warren used to be uh, EVP of uh, Asia, Boston Scientific, mm -hmm. reporting directly to Mike Mahoney, which I knew him from Corindus when we tried to do a JV in China. Okay. And I learned him went to a startup, his own startup, uh, saw the acquired technology that I know, and I was re reaching out to him that he will connect me with high net worth individuals. That was my goal. And after one call, he hooked me up with Sean, who's the head of BD and his partner and others. And he came to me, come and join me and help me scale Genesis. And I was like, like you, what is Genesis? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So he told me the story. I said, wow, that's fascinating. Mm -hmm. uh, Warren said, be a consultant. I said, I don't know how to consult. I'm an all-in kind of guy. So I joined full-time uh, as a venture partner. And Genesis is a unique organization that is a Singapore-based company mm -hmm. that when Warren started that, he saw two main needs. One is a consolidation commercial platform. And we have the same in the US. Mm -hmm. You either go yourself and build your own commercial team, mm -hmm. or you go work with the big companies. Mm -hmm. There's no in between, especially in cardiovascular, as an example. And the second is the innovation arbitrage for emerging markets, uh, predominantly China initially, but then we are going to Japan and other markets. Most startups, mm -hmm. innovative companies, they look into the U.S. first when they do, you know, they do first in human 
whether it's Australia, Europe, US, or other places, uh, South America. But then when they look into the market commercialization, US mm -hmm. is the first one. Mm -hmm. And by the time they go to emerging market, five to seven years lapse. And then you either have a copycat, or you're not first to market and educate the market and losing that arbitrage. So that's how we started Genesis. And his scale for startup is different than what I'm used to. Mm -hmm. uh, Genesis raised significant money from private equity in a couple of rounds. Mm -hmm. the household names like Buyo Capital, uh, Singapore Sovereign Fund, uh, General Atlantic and others. And really starting a consolidation platform. So bought asset um, and then drive commercial growth. Warren is what I call commercial guru. He's the one to 100. Well, my life was usually zero to 10, I'll say. Mm -hmm. He's the mm -hmm. one to 100. Give me a product, I'll scale it. And Genesis is doing that. And the company's four years old, mm -hmm. 2,000 people, across three franchises, uh, surgery, uh, cardiovascular, and structural heart. That's mm -hmm. where Mark joined us, uh, structural heart in the US. Mm -hmm. And really, the goal is Asia first, global second, but we're predominantly focused on Asia right now across mm -hmm. these three franchises. Open platform, mm -hmm. which is we can work with companies, external companies, by distribution that MA that we did, private equity investment or, or partnership with a JV. Mm -hmm. We did JV with Shockwave. Mm -hmm. We bought the license for Penumbra product. Mm -hmm. And the third is innovation, mm -hmm. understanding that you have to be able to continue innovate. And Genesis actually had three innovation hubs, mm -hmm. all in the US. Uh, Shan is leading our, our surgery, digital mm -hmm. surgery, robotic AI from Minneapolis. Uh, Aiton is leading our vascular, and then the third one is structural heart. Mm -hmm. So I was fascinating. And it is fascinating. It truly really is. It's uh, so different than anything going on out there in business. And, and, today. and, and Genesis is growing 40% year over year. Yeah. And, Significant growth. And really, despite COVID, because mm -hmm. I think Warren started that during COVID. Mm -hmm. Despite value-based purchasing, mm -hmm. especially in China, the limits, the quantity, not the quantity, it's the price. And while it's a 2,000 people organization, I'll give credit to Warren and the team. They want to bring more startup guys mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from a culture perspective, mm -hmm. challenging the status quo, not being comfortable, and really think about how do you innovate, and not just the product, but also your business model. Because mm -hmm. you have always two innovation, the business model innovation and the product innovation. Mm -hmm. So how do you merge them together? That's fascinating. That is fascinating. The, the hybridization of the business, of the, of the, the that, that's, to me that is so, um, that's so unique and it's almost like, gosh, why didn't anyone ever address this before? That is such a significant gap. And to get these high, yeah. high, uh, highly visible partnerships with the penumbras, with the shockwaves of yeah. the world to, to really be able to, and to help them move incredible products in a much more consolidated and much more focused exactly. way. Exactly. That's, that's such a healthy op option for A lot of training, so it's not just commercial platform. Mm -hmm. Meaning we have, we just built a, we meaning not me obviously, mm -hmm. <laughs> but a, a huge innovation center in Wuxi, which is two hours west of Shanghai, that really have animal lab to bring physicians every weekend to train them. So it's, when you think about the good products in the US, like mm -hmm. Paver or even Shockwave, training was such a key element of that. Yes. And yes. you need to invest in training. Yes. And Because you want to train them to do the procedure the right way and then repeat user and all that. So just invest in the right fundamental. Yeah. It's always challenging to grow a business, especially today, but yeah. um, I was very excited about the vision but also yeah. the execution of that well it's 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 the the vision the execution it's the uniqueness of the of the uh, of the, the the footprint so yeah. far and what they're doing um and, and mark had said the same thing he hadn't seen a facility like yeah. the one in shanghai he was yeah, blown yeah. away yeah. by how yeah. how impressive it is yeah. so a lot going on and i'm i'm every time i talk with a a, a principal from the organization i walk away with a Boy, they still are startup rooted. They still yeah. are looking best in class technology. They still are thinking, whether it's the surgical or yeah. cardiovascular or structural heart, or they're they're all still thinking creatively as well as pragmatically about about the market and how to make best in class products. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. easier said than done, and we're of course. like always making our own mistakes and sure. sometimes fall into we're a large corporation, we don't want to take risk. Mm -hmm. But I'll go back to the risk. It's all about risk in the end of the day. It's all about risk. What's your commercial revenue mm -hmm. target? And how do you drive your sales into that? Mm -hmm. 
what's your innovation time, uh, timeline? How do you speak with physician and understanding what the risk for innovation they want to take to embrace mm -hmm. and adopt new technologies? And the risk is go ups and downs. Oh, usually we can, depends on market and mm -hmm. investors, but so far it's really, I think, phenomenal, the growth. And it's still growing here, mm -hmm. here organic. Organically. Organically. That's, that's, that's what's so impressive. It's yeah. like, how did I not know this organization but yeah. on the radar for five years and had these kind of this growth for so long? You know, yeah. it's just because they're in Asia. Yeah. Uh, Genesis in Asia, I mean, I was mm -hmm. uh, back in February, end of February. Mm -hmm. you know, I waited for China to open up. Everyone had COVID, then I blew up over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <I waited. laughs> and now there's no COVID yeah. anymore. <laughs> yeah, <you're good. laughs> uh, which yeah. is amazing. It seems like a bad memory for all of oh, us. Oh, my gosh. Um, well, I think it opened up, and, and these, this is this is kind of going back to your your point about about Israel, and, and you know we've got so much more collaboration going on yeah. with that, the APAC region, and and so, geez, we're getting more, even out of specifically Australia, which I hadn't yeah. heard of in many many years, yeah. and yeah. so there's 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 so much to be excited about. So in your role, are you eyeing new potential deals? Is that is that your function? I have several. Things, but most importantly, yes. Mm -hmm. So I'm sitting on behalf of Genesis on three boards of companies. Some of them are within our franchise, mm -hmm. and some of kind of like bets on blue skies outside of our franchise. Okay. And, but speaking with startups and other partners, right? Not just startups. Of how do you bring innovation? Whether it's established company that, mm -hmm. like Shockwave, mm -hmm. uh, as an example, that that deal is not is Shant uh, did the deal, not me. But mm -hmm. how do you bring innovation? Established innovation? Mm -hmm. But also, if you look on startups that are approaching their first in human, let's do that in parallel. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you elevate your value because if you go to the Metronic, the Striker, the Boston, they will not value Asia in their mm -hmm, model. Mm -hmm. So we come to startups saying, we'll just increase your value. We take the cost on our mm -hmm. end and we'll do first in human and, mm -hmm. and regulatory uh, in Asia. Mm -hmm. uh, and also on that high level mm. strategic, what do we want to do from a product, from commercialization? Mm -hmm. And how do we grow? Okay. Do we want to play in robotics? What's our angle for robotics? Mm -hmm. Do we want to play in digital in surgery and data? And we have some bets there as well. Okay. But we're, we're still very, very focused right mm -hmm. now because mm -hmm. we're still a private company. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we're very focused on where we deploy our cash, especially today, right? That uh, makes sense. Yeah, but makes the deal sense. for me is so many companies out there are really mm -hmm. good. And to me personally, going back to your uh, podcast uh, initially, it was, I never worked for strategic. Mm -hmm. I'm a startup guy all my life. Mm -hmm. It's a different mindset. And I thought I knew how they work. I spent time speaking with them. Mm -hmm. It's not until you're in there and see how things are working. It's completely different. It's, there's nothing like experience no, to, to, to tell you, to tell you that. Well, the, this is, this has been um, incredible. So on, on, on just a last note, what are you most excited about in the industry? What are some things that you're, you're following? Any trends that you think are are compelling or anything? Last that note that I should talk for 20 minutes right now about that. <laughs> <laughs> but 20, 30, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. There's a lot of trends, man. Like you, yeah. you see the, the, the titanic shift in a way from traditional medical device to more data, mm -hmm. digitalization. How do you take an annual procedure doing it uh, digital, digital and what do you do with the data? Mm -hmm. And I think there's also a lot of hype involved mm -hmm. in that because in the end of the day, you have to take whatever you have and make it actionable for the healthcare provider, physician, nurse, whoever it is, but also to the patient. To me, the biggest one I'm passionate about is personalization, okay. which is a you know tag word that catch everything. But in the end of the day, most hospitals still do the same treatment to the same patient and not because the devices are not optimized for them. Mm -hmm. The device on the stent, for example, mm -hmm. is the same stent, mm -hmm. different length, mm -hmm. but the drug on the stent is the same drug. But you see more and more companies trying to tailor procedures for that mm -hmm. specific patient. Mm -hmm. And then also the other thing that I'm passionate about is how do you take that outside of the hospital? Mm -hmm. So the pre and the post, mm -hmm. right? We, as a healthcare system, especially in the US, but worldwide, we're treating sick patients and we're treating the, we're reactive. We're treating the acute event of sick patients. Mm -hmm. You want to be proactive. It's challenging mm -hmm. because the reimbursement is not there. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. and then what data is more important for you? Is it your blood pressure? Is it your the color of your skin? And how do you mm -hmm. act on that? And how do you change the healthcare? It's a long journey. And uh, but to me, that personalization mm -hmm. with data and, and digital is the most 
fascinating one. It's, I agree with you wholeheartedly on that. And, and the ability to use the intelligence that is being gathered in a meaningful way to personalize, yeah. because you're right. Right now you walk into a hospital, you show these symptoms, they treat you one way, it's trial and error. Oh, exactly. that didn't work. Let's yeah. try this. Good. You know, I mean, uh, it sounds so rudimentary about it, but we, we can do a lot better yeah. and we have the intelligence yeah. to do it. So it's exciting to exciting to move forward. Well, thank you, Tal, for oh, being with us today and for sharing your wisdom over such an incredible career thank you, Holly. that you're just getting started in, I might add. I'm still 20 years old. Right? That's it. That's it. We're still, <laughs> we're still 20 in our, in our yeah. no matter what the timetable yeah, exactly. says. <laughs> yeah. And to our audience, thank you for joining us. As always, we appreciate you, you listening and subscribing. We are on Apple. We are on Spotify. And uh, be well. Thank you.